uh, you protected us today, we're going to protect you tomorrow whenever the need comes. Ibn Abdul Bar, another very early author, says, Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. So today I'm going to be reacting to bracelets of Kisra, story of Suraka, mind blowing miracle of Prophet Muhammad. I'm very excited to be reacting to these. I always, I've always said that I'm more interested in stories more than anything else. Stories are the best way to tell or to give out information, I believe. So, yeah, I can't wait to react to whatever is in this video. And I just hope you guys are having a great day. And I hope your year started out well, as well as mine at least. So, yeah. Let's see what this video has for us. During the life of the Prophet والسلام, when things became too hard in Mecca, too hard in Mecca, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to make hijrah. Allowed him to make hijrah. And we all know the very famous story. He was surrounded, his house was surrounded. He escaped without them, uh, with Allah making them blind where they couldn't see him. He walked right past them. And he left with his best friend in this life, his Khalil, Abu Bakr. And they left out of the city of Mecca. And in the morning when they had realized the Prophet ﷺ was gone, and it was actually Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an was in his bed, who by the way said that was the most beautiful night's sleep he had ever had in his life. They sent people to chase them down. And there was one man in particular whom they hired who was the best of those who did that? Trackers. His name was Suraqa ibn Malik. Radiallahu anhu. The best of those trackers. He could track anything. So he said, I'll find him. No problem. I'll find him. And the booty, the bounty, the war money of a hundred camels had been placed on Abu Bakr and the Prophet Dead or alive, anybody who finds them gets a hundred camels. That's a lot of money. A hundred camels is a lot of money. The Prophet didn't even own one camel until the Hijrah. Right. A camel is like a car. Imagine a hundred cars. It's a lot of money. And so there's a hundred camels. Whoever catches the Prophet says, I'm Abu Bakr, dead or alive, no questions asked. Suraqa ibn Malik narrates the story to us himself in the first person. That's why it's very interesting. He narrates the story after he accepts Islam. Uh, and Suraqa ibn Malik says that he was sitting with his uh, fellow tribesmen and the news comes that they're searching for three riders. Because now they've discovered the plot. They discover Abu Bakr and the Prophet and a guy. Three people have left. So the news goes out. It's on the grapevine. Three riders in the desert. If you find them dead or alive and they are the Prophet they would then they are, uh, you get a hundred camels. And Suraqa says that when he saw them for the first time in the distance, all of a sudden my horse sunk into the ground and threw me, flipped me over. And it had never done this before. In another version, he said that I could see a smoke between me and the three riders. Something's clearly wrong. And so he said, I pulled out my Aslam. Aslam is their method of predicting the future. Aslam is like tarot cards or reading your palms or something like this. They had a type of istisqab in Aslam, which basically means they're going to ask the gods what should be done. Call it a pagan Salat al istikhara That's really what it is. Okay, so he said, I pulled out those Aslam. What is Aslam, by the way? It's, uh, it's arrows that has certain things on it. You know, literally like you have the tarot cards or Ouija boards. It has these weird symbols and whatnot. You need to interpret it your own way. So he has those things with him. So he said, I threw out my Aslam onto the sand to see which direction is going to go. See all of that. And the response that I got was, do not proceed. I ignored it and continued going because he wants the money. Right? The second time I came closer, once again, the exact same thing happened. Once again, I was thrown across the horse. Once again, I took it out. Once again, it says, do not proceed. I ignored it and went for the third time until finally they were within uh, yelling distance. I could, I could speak to them. And for the third time, my horse did it even more violently. And I knew that this was a force beyond me. I knew that this was a man I could not reach beyond my taqa, beyond my power. 
And he said in this hadith, he said, and I knew that the affair of this man would spread. I, Islam would spread. I knew that the affair of this man would spread. So I called out to them that I am a safe person. I'm not going to harm you. Give me permission to come close. Suraka ibn Malik says that I asked permission from the Prophet wasallam to give me protection in writing. Allah, it's an amazing thing. One minute he wants to pull his arrow to kill them. The next minute he says, I knew that their affair would spread everywhere. So I wanted protection when that happened. I didn't want to be hurt when that happened. So I asked for protection. A man. A man means we're not going to harm you. Right? Well, amazing. Look at how in one instance from the hunted to begging permission to live basically. And the Prophet allowed Abdullah ibn uh, Arqat to write down on a scroll, write down on a parchment, a man for Suraqa ibn Malik, that you will be safe. Suraqa ibn Malik, you're going to be safe. We're not going to harm you. You, uh, uh, you protected us today. We're going to protect you tomorrow whenever the need comes. Ibn Abdul Bar, another very early author says that when Suraqa turned to leave, the Prophet for the first time turned to him and said to him, Ya Suraqa, Kayfabik. O Suraqa, how will you be the day that you put on the bracelets of Kisra? How will you be the day that you put on the bracelets of Kisra? Suraqa, shocked, couldn't say anything other than Kisra, the son of Hurmuz. Like as if we said the president, there's only one president. As if you said the king in any land of kings, there's only one king. There's only one Kisra. Right? But he can't, like, Kisra, the son of Hurmuz, meaning the emperor of Persia? You want me to wear his bracelets or I'm going to wear his bracelets? And that's it. The Prophet didn't even respond. How will you be the day that you put on the bracelets of... Now, Kisra was uh, well known for the jewelry that he would wear as a man. He's a man, but he would wear jewelry. Right? Not to mention things that you shouldn't be seeing, but if you've seen the movie 300, you've seen the leader of the, of the Persians dressed in all these weird things, right? That's basically Kisra there. That's the, uh, the, the, idea, the idea of the Roman or the Persian emperors. There would be bracelets and earrings and whatnot. This is, they were dressed like this. And he had very expensive jewelry and very expensive gold and decorated bracelets. Well known. Everybody envied him for this. Okay. So the Prophet is saying, how are you going to be the day that you wear those bracelets of Kisra? <laughs> Zaraqa is shaking his head, he's rubbing his head. He's thinking, what did he just say? This guy is by himself, hiding in a cave. Everybody's looking for him to kill him. He has no support. He has nothing. And he's sitting here telling me that I'm going to be given the bracelets of one of the greatest kings on the earth right now, the greatest empires that the world has known. This man must be out of his mind. He's lost it. This is when he thought, he just said, this guy's nuts. And on the day of Hunayn, which is after the conquest of Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ conquered uh, basically the other tribes outlying Mecca, and he finally conquered the tribe of Suraqa ibn Malik. Suraqa pulled out the very piece of paper that he had. It's not paper, it's actually parchment. He pulled out the very piece of leather that he had, that the Prophet ﷺ had written to him almost 10 years ago, eight, nine years ago. And the Prophet ﷺ recognized Suraqa and he gave him the security, he gave him the aman, and Suraqa accepted Islam, and Suraqa became a well-known uh, Sahabi after this. And he migrated to Medina, he lived in Medina, the Prophet ﷺ passed away. Then Abu Bakr's Khalafa came, it was struggle, they were fighting different uh, elements within the Ummah, the people who uh, apostated from Islam, the people who refused to pay zakah, a lot of things happened. Then the Khilaf of Umar came and Umar was able to conquer the Persian Empire. And the bounty came into the Khilaf. And as Umar was going through it and distributing it, a box was brought to him and he opened it up. And in it was the bracelets of Qisra. And so Suraqa is called, he's found in the city called. And Umar puts him on his own chair. And Umar finds in that gold the bracelets of Kisra, because everybody knows the promise. Everybody knows what the Prophet said. These are now legends everybody's heard. He finds the two bracelets of Kisra. He puts them on the hand of Suraqa ibn Malik. 
and the entire congregation starts saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. This is the fulfillment of what the Prophet said. And in fact, the version Ibn Abdul Bar says, they took Suraqa around Medina. Can you imagine the bracelets of Kisra, the most powerful man now? And uh, Umar ibn Khattab said, Alhamdulillah, who has taken this bracelets away from Kisra, the son of Hurmuz, and given them to Su Suraqa, a Bedouin from the tribe of the Bani, the tribe of the Banu Mudlij. Alhamdulillah, who has taken them from this mighty man and given them to this Muslim as what the Prophet predicted so many years ago. SubhanAllah, what an amazing story. And it is clearly mentioned in our books. And it is one of the many, many miracles that are mentioned uh, in the time of the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam. The video was very, very interesting. A little bit confused here and there because is this the entire story of um, Soraka or is there more to this story? I just like the fact that this man was set out to hunt Muhammad and the time he meets Muhammad the story just changes it just shows that you cannot touch someone anointed sometimes God God does things his own way. God is a very powerful God. So despite what you want to do, if it's not meant to be, it won't it won't happen. Things just don't happen the way you want them to happen sometimes because God just has a different plan for you. I guess this is what happens in this story. You're out there hunting someone trying to bring them to maybe a justice that doesn't make sense and during that path your way is changed maybe you get to know the truth maybe you get to see real events as to what you believed you're just your, your thinking process just changes you can't touch someone like i said anointed by god god doesn't allow that i believe but anyway let me know what you think let me know how you think about the development of the story and i just like how muhammad predicted to this person and the person was confused and years later it comes to be sometimes you have to be patient sometimes you have to look into certain things in life you have to change certain things in life to get to where you're going only when you accept what's meant to be yours or how things are going then you will get to the point in life where you're supposed to be. It may not be today, maybe 20 years from now, but you will still get to your destination at the end of the day. But if I'm missing anything other than that, please let me know in the comment section below. Your comments are highly appreciated. And yeah, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.